Hey everybody, welcome to the real United States and welcome to the city of Bladensburg, Maryland. Now, Bladensburg has a very important place in American history and it's not all good. <laughs> but uh, we'll get there, we'll get there. We are here in front of the monument depicting the Battle of Bladensburg in the final months of the War of 1812. So the war has been raging on for two years. And uh, finally the, the British forces, the British Navy and the British Army decide to attack what they believe uh, is a weak point in the American defenses. Now, there are, there are two admirals, one is uh, Cockburn and one is Cochran. Uh, Admiral Cochran said, hey, I think there's a weak place at Washington, Philadelphia, and Baltimore, and that would be the place to attack. So Admiral uh, Cockburn, who was the commanding uh, officer of the British Navy, said, yep, yeah, okay, fine. And started up the Chesapeake Bay and to attack what is now Bladensburg. Well, actually it was Bladensburg at the time. And uh, on the land side of it, the 4,500 British troops were led by Major General, I'm sorry, Major General Ross. Now, here's the thing. The American troops are led by William Winder, a brigadier general, and uh, Winder, Winder was the nephew of Levin Winder, who was the sitting mayor, mayor, governor of Maryland at the time. So he may have got his position out of nepotism. I don't know. I'm just saying it's possible. And uh, he had a force of 6,500 men. So you'd think that, easy math, he's got 6,500 men, and uh, <clears throat> Major General Ross only has 4,500 men. That should be an easy one, right? Well, no, not so much, all right? Winder wasn't all that experienced in combat, I don't think, and the problem is, is that his forces weren't. A huge portion of that 6,500 were militia. They weren't Continental regulars, they were militia. So they were not well trained or well disciplined. Ross had just been finished up with the Napoleonic Wars. So him and his men were like, you know, years of battle hardening. They were well trained, well equipped, and battle hardened. They knew how to deal with an aggressive enemy. So they come marching up here and the colonials God bless them, were, were overrun and, and panicked, and ver their lines broke, and they ran away. Well, this became the worst defeat in the history of the American military. So that's why I say the Battle of Bladensburg, it's not all good news. Um, they ran away. Now, Winder ended up getting court-martialed, but he was acquitted of any wrongdoing because apparently under the military code, incompetence is not a crime. So anyway, the colonial naval forces, however, were commanded by a, a pretty astute fellow by the name of Joshua Barney. And Joshua Barney, who was a commodore, incidentally, that's kind of like a captain who is in charge of multiple vessels. He hasn't made it to the Admiralty, but he's been get like a fleet captain, okay? Well, Commodore Barney is depicted here. He's the one with the sword in the middle. He's been wounded, he was shot in the leg. And uh, the bullet never was, they were never able to remove it. Uh, although apparently they were able to remove it after he died. You know, obviously you can in the autopsy, you can remove the bullet. And the bullet now, I was just told, 
is actually um, at a, a like a mini museum at the Daughters of the American Revolution in downtown Washington, D.C. It's in a little silver display thing uh, at the DAR in Washington, D.C., so the bullet in his leg. And I'm going to go up there and I'm going to show you something here. In this representation of him, you'll see the wound right here. There's the wound. It's actually part of the bronze casting of Varney. The fellow to his, his left, my, the right hand side of the screen, is a, a fellow by the name of uh, Charles Ball. He was a freed slave who fought alongside of Varney. And the other character is simply one of the unnamed Marines that served under Varney's command. And of course it says, undaunted in battle. And, and truly the, the Navy and the Marines in this case fought undaunted until they were just overrun. There was only a couple of hundred of them uh, under Varney's command. And, and they were just overrun, they had to retreat. They didn't break and run quite like the militia did, but they were overrun. So the problem with all of this is that we're only nine miles from Washington, D.C., down that road. <laughs> uh, and you may remember what happened next, or you may not. So Ross and uh, Cockburn get on their horses and calmly stride the nine miles into Washington, D.C. and set fire to the Capitol building. <laughs> um, I should mention, by the way, that when, when uh, Commodore Var Varney was wounded, something very unusual happened. Um, the commander-in-chief, the sitting president, James Madison, actually had fled Washington and had come to the battle, and he took command of the troops. Um, only twice in American history has that happened where a sitting president, the commander-in-chief, has taken command on the battlefield. And this was, this was one of them. The other time, of course, being when Washington uh, was, took command at uh, the Whiskey Rebellion. But so, yeah, Madison showed up and fought alongside the rest of them. It didn't help to say they were, they were overrun. Cockburn, Ross were right into Washington. They burned down the Capitol building. They then calmly ride up Pennsylvania Avenue to the White House, which has been abandoned. And, and, and Dolly Madison, you know, has left with dinner on the table. Cockburn and, and, and Ross, arrogant, they walk into the building, sit down with their senior officers, and eat the dinner. <laughs> I swear to God. They had to get up and they set fire to the building and walk out. It's just that simple. They also burned the Treasury Building, the War Department. You know, they, they were they were really pissed off. You gotta remember, a year before in 1813, uh, we had burned the capital of Canada at York. <laughs> so they remembered and they were pretty pissed off about that. Payback sucked, folks. So anyway, that's the Battle of Bladensburg. Now this Vanya would, uh, was placed here um, in 2014, on, actually on <laughs> August 23rd, uh, the day before the 200th anniversary of the Battle of Bladensburg, which was August 24th of 1814. So I'm told, by the way, I was just told this morning, they're coming in here like tomorrow and they're gonna clean this bronze and power wash the, the limestone and this will all be pretty and shiny. Uh, I decided to go ahead and shoot it today anyway because we got good light and because this is how it normally looks with the patina on the bronze. Now I've got a little bit of a sad story to tell you and that's about the actual sculpture. This sculpture is the work of artist Joanna Blake. Um, and for those of you that go to the trouble to look her up, yes, her maiden name was Campbell. It's Joanna Campbell Blake. She's no relation of mine. It's just a coincidence. So 
Don't bother to write me and ask. Uh, no, we're not related. I never knew the woman. Unfortunately, um, uh, Mrs. Blake died in a tragic accident in the following year, in 2015, uh, in a motorcycle accident in Italy on her 39th birthday. And uh, obviously the community here in Bladensburg took that very, very hard. It was a very sad thing. Uh, but she did at least leave this beautiful, beautiful legacy to her talent and, and her work. And as I said, this is set in a limestone uh, base and surrounding frame. Uh, there is, of course, a nice placard on the back. Uh, a lot of it's granite. If you come here just to see this, you can come around the back side and you can read more about the entire campaign. This is the back side of the monument for the Battle of Bladensburg, and this is a beautiful black granite. Uh, this is black granite that's been inset into the limestone. Uh, this, of course, is all about the the trustees and everybody that's responsible for the building of this park and this monument. And then this beautiful part here explains about the Battle of Bladensburg and they've done some spectacular things. But a special note, something that I don't know that I've ever seen before, is these color pictures um, here of, of Commodore Barney and Major General Robert Ross um, uh, the British forces, the, the two guys that were really the driving forces in this battle, color portraits and these paintings that are reproduced in color on, on the black granite, they're inserts, you know, you can see where, I don't, I don't really know what that's even printed on, if that's also granite, and if it is, I have no idea what technique they used to, to do that on granite, but my God, is it beautiful in person. It is just stunning. So anyway, in the Battle of Bladensburg, August 24th, 1814, and uh, it, it's just, this is what you can, you can come here. So if you've forgotten this, you remember seeing the video, but you don't remember the details, you can come around the back, and you can read all about the Battle of Bladensburg. Now, this particular place, by the way, falls on something called the Star Spangled Banner National Historic Trail. Okay, so we've got, in the United States, uh, quite a number of national trails, and uh, some portion of those are National Historic Trails. So this is the Star Spangled Banner, uh, which is about our national anthem but it's largely about the Battle of, or the War of 1812, from its inception down on, on Tangier Island in the mouth of the Chesapeake, and culminating in Fort McHenry in Baltimore. So we are probably gonna do a lot more on that trail in the coming months and years, but I just thought I'd mention it now while we were here. Well, before I leave this beautiful park, where the monument for the Battle of Ladensburg sits. It's a, it's a lovely little park. And it's got its own parking lot, and parking is such a premium in this part of the country that that made it a pure joy to come and do this episode. It really did. Um, but I want to give a shout out. I want to give a special thanks to John Gianetti. Now, John, thanks so much for stopping by and taking the time to talk with us. Uh, John. It was the chairman, is the chairman, of the Amman Memorial Trust Monument Committee. He was the chairman. He was the, 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 the head of the whole thing, who was uh, this, responsible for raising the funds, overseeing the project, making this come to life for the community and for the nation. And uh, we really appreciate it, John, that you stopped by. And what had happened here, folks, is that uh, he shared with us some tidbits of information, little anecdotes and stuff uh, that wouldn't have otherwise been readily available, I wouldn't have known about in a normal uh, internet search or in, a, in, in, in my research and reading. Um, so 
I, I think it made the uh, the video a little more informative, a little more interesting, and and we really appreciate you taking the time to stop in, John, and and, and say hi and introduce yourself. And uh, we we do appreciate the the hospitality that we've gotten from the community of Bladensburg. So, thank you very much, Mr. John Gianetti, and the Amon Memorial Trust Monument Committee for uh, just a wonderful experience. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this short visit here to Bladensburg, Maryland and the historic Battle of Bladensburg and this beautiful work by the late, great Joanna Blank. So if you've got questions or comments, leave them in the comments section down below. I love hearing from all of you. I try to get back to everybody I can. I try to answer everything that I can. Um, if you want to just stop in and say hi, folks, because I do love hearing from all of you. I really do. Um, this is a community, and it's about being able to talk to one another. So stop in, leave me a comment. And uh, if you like this, give it a like. And for the, please, please consider sharing this uh, with your friends and family and, 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 and YouTubers and whatever um, so that they know about the channel and maybe we can build this community even a little more. That would certainly be nice. If you're new here, hey, thanks for joining us. And please consider picking subscribe. Come along for the adventure because we got lots more to show you. And as always, folks, well, thank you for watching.